Next presentation of Osmocon 2014 paper sponsored by NECC and Safola Oats is Abhilash M. Uh, topic of paper, Association of Vitamin D Status with Pulmonary Functions in Adult Asthmatics. It's a case control study. Respected judges and my dear colleagues, a very pleasant morning to you all. I'm M. Abhilash, a second year student at Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, Pondicherry, here to present my research paper on Association of Vitamin D Status with Pulmonary Function in Adult Asthmatics, a case control study. Well, before I go into the details of my research, let me refresh your memory regarding vitamin D. Well, as we all know, vitamin D is synthesized in our skin on our exposure to UVB rays from the sun. On exposure, 7 dehydrocholesterol is converted to cold calciferol in our skin. This cold calciferol goes to the liver where it gets hydroxylated to 25 hydroxy cold calciferol and is stored there. On requirement, this 25 hydroxy cold calciferol goes to the kidneys where it gets converted to 1,25 dihydroxy cold calciferol, which is the active form of vitamin D. Now let's talk about asthma. As we all know, asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder due to which there's chronic cough, chest tightness, dyspnea, and reversible bronchoconstriction. Now that we know about vitamin D and asthma, I know the question in everyone's mind. What could be the relation between both? Well, the relation between vitamin D and asthma started as early as 1934, when Rapaport et al. found that supplementation of vitamin D resulted in significant relief of asthma in more than 96% of patients. Later, there was a lag of research regarding this topic. In 2009, Gin et al. and Stockley et al. found that vitamin D has an immunomodulatory role as well. Recently, in 2012, Brown et al. found that higher calcitriol concentration have been associated with better pulmonary function in a large cross-sectional study of the U.S. population. And hence, the main aim of my study was to associate vitamin D status with severity in asthma patients. I, we hypothesize that vitamin D status affects the pulmonary function in asthma patients. And so the objectives of my study was first to assess the vitamin D status marked by 25 hydroxy cold calciferol levels, serum calcium levels, and serum phosphate levels. Secondly, to evaluate the association between vitamin D status and pulmonary function as measured by forced vital capacity, forced expiratory volume in one second, and FEV1-FVC ratio in adult asthmatics. And finally, to correlate the vitamin D status with severity in asthma patients. The subjects who were included in my study were asthma patients between the ages of 18 and 50 years attending the OPD of pulmonary medicine. The subjects who were excluded from my study were asthma patients with certain other chronic clinical conditions like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, hepatic renal and endocrine disorders, and certain other pulmonary disorders such as COPD, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, etc., as all these conditions altered the serum vitamin D levels. The place where I did my study was at Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute, Pondicherry. I divided my subject groups into two. One had patients with well-controlled asthma, and the other had patients with poorly controlled asthma. In all my subjects, vitamin D status was assayed by an immunoassay method, serum calcium was done by arsenazo method, serum phosphate was measured by UV molybdate method, and a pulmonary function test was performed using a spirovane spirometer. SPSS version 17 software was used for all statistical analysis. Results were compared using an unpaired student t-test. All the data were expressed as mean plus or minus standard deviation and a Pearson's correlation was used. A p-value of less than 0.05 was considered as statistically significant. As you can see from the results we obtained, vitamin D was significantly lower in patients with poorly controlled asthma as the levels were only 19.6 nanogram per milliliter. Whereas in well-controlled asthmatics, it was 26.9 nanograms per milliliter, giving a p-value of less than 0.05. Hence, we can say vitamin D is significantly lower in patients with poorly controlled asthma when compared with well-controlled asthmatics. Similarly, FEV1 of percentage predicted was significantly lower in patients with poorly controlled asthma when compared with patients with well-controlled asthma, as the p-value was less than 0.05. Similarly, FEV1-FVC ratio was also significantly reduced in patients with poorly controlled asthma when compared with well-controlled asthmatics. 
a correlation or an association between vitamin D status, FVV1 of percentage predicted, and FVV1 FVC ratio gave a p value of less than 0.01, having an Pearson correlation coefficient value of 0.643 with FVV1 percentage predicted and 0.714 with FVV1 FVC ratio. This clearly states that serum vitamin D clearly affects FVV1 FVC ratio more than FVV1 of percentage predicted. And hence to conclude, we found significant correlation between vitamin D and pulmonary function test. This was similar to a study by Scrag et al. in 2005. We were also able to show that a decrease in vitamin D levels is more so in poorly controlled asthmatics, which was similar to a study by Richards et al. in 2002. Hence, we clinically imply that intake of adequate vitamin D may decrease the severity and exacerbation of asthma, and there could be an improvement in pulmonary function as well. Thank you. Sir? So we clinically imply that intake of adequate vitamin D may decrease the severity of asthma and there could be an uh, improvement in pulmonary function. Yeah, but did you show that in your study? Does the study conclude that? Yes, but… Can you draw that conclusion from the study? This conclude we are doing… Fr from the study we conclude this, uh, that it can… Conclude that, no? You sir? can only conclude that this was an observational study. We imply clinically that it How can… How can you imply that? I mean, that's what I'm saying, that's what I'm trying to say, that uh, is, uh, can you draw these conclusions from your study? Sir, the… Uh, it's very important to know what conclusions can be drawn from a particular Sir, as study. you can see, vitamin D was significantly lower in patients with poorly controlled asthma, sir. So, if we take excess uh, uh, norm, uh, vitamin D, if we supplement vitamin D, that could be a bet better in pulmonary Both of them could be indicators of uh, some other thing could be controlling that. Some other thing could be controlling vitamin D levels, can be, could be lowering the vitamin D levels, which and vitamin D may just be an indicator of the severity of asthma. It's not that uh, if you intervene and give vitamin D, the asthma severity is going to be reduced. It's not shown by this study. You need an interventional study to show that. Okay. That is what yes. you have to understand that yes, you just by doing one study, an observational study, you cannot con conclude everything. Yes, you cannot conclude… Uh, you, j you have to be very precise in your conclusion as to what your study is, sh is showing. Okay. Yes, yes. So, your study is showing that vitamin D levels correlate with the severity of asthma yes, and and uh, lower vitamin D levels are, are more often found in people who are having more severe asthma. Yes, sir. Okay, it doesn't mean that by giving vitamin D, it's going to uh, reduce the severity of asthma. That, that needs another study. So, the extension yes. of this study was next year you should try to uh, supplement. supplement vitamin D in these patients and see whether it reduces, whether it does reduce the severity of asthma. Then you can make the other two conclusions. Yes, see, India, we have uh, Almost uh, an endemic of hypovitamin D3. Yeah? So, uh, was there any study comparing the normal person without the asthma with the uh, asthmatics in respect of the severity and the chronicity? So, no, I didn't understand. That should be done because you see in a normal person also we have uh, low vitamin D levels in our uh, country, yes, most of the people. So, that is why it is very, very difficult to say. Unless we have the normal population of the age matched and uh, gender matched people. Sir, in, very in our college ah, they did yeah. a normal ah. study. But so only have compared between the asthma with good control and asthma with the poor control, is it not? Two groups were taken, yes, right? Sir. But if the asthma with the normal per, normal population without the asthma, with the asthma, that would have been very this thing. Is there any study of that sort sir, you have uh, had in the reference? Yes, sir, there were many reference in uh, US but not in no, India. No, it's a normal versus asthmatic. Sir, there was in uh, British population, sir, but in India there's no, uh, no, no such research. There was there significance between the normal population with the uh, hypovitamin D and uh, uh, hypovitaminosis in uh, asthma? Sir, there's no research oh, in India, sir. Thank you. Any questions from the audience?